Chapter 9 Something Different About Mrs. Jules The children returned from Christmas vacation. On each desk were two knitting needles and a hunk of yarn. Today we are learning how to knit, said Mrs. Jules. She showed the class how it was done. See, you stick this needle through here, then wrap this around like this, stick this through this, pull this like this, and then you stick this here. Any questions? Everyone stared at her. Good, said Mrs. Jules. I want everybody to make socks. Okay, let's get started. Damien looked at his knitting needles. He didn't have a clue. He looked back at Mrs. Jules. Now, more than ever, he was sure she was somehow different. She was sitting at her desk, knitting and eating bolognios. Damien couldn't remember Mrs. Jules ever eating a bolognio before. A bolognio was an Oreo cookie, except instead of the white part, there was a round hunk of bologna. Miss Mush invented them. Hey, Mac, whispered Damien, does Mrs. Jules seem different to you? She's fat, said Mac. That's not a nice thing to say, said Damien. I didn't say it to Mrs. Jules, said Mac. I didn't go, hey, Mrs. Jules, you're fat. Mrs. Jules cleared her throat as she stood up. She walked around the room. Very nice, DJ, she said. You're doing fine, Rondi. She stopped at Joe's desk. Oh, Joe, she gushed. Look, everybody, I want you to see Joe's sock. She held it up. Isn't it the most beautiful sock you've ever seen? It was a great sock. Everybody ooed and awed. Joe was as surprised as anyone. He didn't know he knew how to make socks, but that boy was born to knit. Mrs. Jewell started to cry. I love this sock, she sobbed. Uh-oh, said Kathy. I think she's finally flipped out. I love you, Kathy, said Mrs. Jules. She looked around the room. I love all of you. She put her hand on Kathy's desk. I love this desk, she said. I love the chalkboard. I love the clock on the wall. There was a ruler on the floor. Mrs. Jules picked it up. I love this ruler, she declared. Hey, that's mine, said Dana. But... Uh, that's okay, Mrs. Jules. You can have it. I don't want your ruler, Dana, said Mrs. Jules, handing it to her. Do you want my pair of scissors? offered Sherry. Don't give her anything sharp, warned Kathy. Mrs. Jules wiped away her tears and smiled at the class. I'm going to miss all of you very much, she said. Are you going away? asked Damien. Yeah, to the loony bin, whispered Kathy. Are you sick? asked Eric Ovens. No, I'm not sick, said Mrs. Jules. In fact, I'm better than I've ever been, she beamed. I'm going to have a baby. Everyone gasped. Damien couldn't believe it. He was so happy he jumped out of his seat and hugged Mrs. Jules. She was soon surrounded by all of her students even Kathy wanting to hug her. Today is my last day here, Mrs. Jules told her students. My doctor doesn't want me walking up and down 30 flights of stairs every day. I wasn't even supposed to come today, but I just had to say goodbye. I thought you were getting fat, said Mac, but I didn't want to say anything. Thank you, Mac, said Mrs. Jules. You are very considerate. Can I touch your stomach? asked Stephen. Mrs. Jules laughed. Sure, she said. The children took turns touching her stomach. What are you going to name your baby? asked Allison. I don't know yet, said Mrs. Jules. What do you think? Well, if she's a girl, said Allison, I think you should name her Rainbow Sunshine. That's a nice name, said Mrs. Jules. And if he's a boy? Buckethead, said Allison. She didn't like boys. If he's a boy, you should name him Jet Rocket, said Joel. Jet Rocket Jules, mused Mrs. Jules. That has a nice ring to it. And what if it's a girl? Cootie face, said Joe. Mrs. Jules laughed. So let me get this straight, she said. If he's a boy, I name him Buckethead. Right, said Allison and Rondi. And if she's a girl, I'll name her Cootie face. 
Right, said Joe and John. Damien laughed. He knew Mrs. Jules was only joking. At least he hoped she was. Terence placed his palm flat against Mrs. Jules' stomach. Hey, he exclaimed, the dude kicked me. Suddenly, Damien felt very sad. He was going to miss her a lot. He wiped a tear from his eye. It's unfair, he shouted. We finally come back to Wayside School after being gone for so long, and now you're leaving us. I have to, said Mrs. Jules. I know, whined Damien. You have to make sure that you and your baby are healthy, but it still isn't fair. I think you'll like your substitute teacher, said Mrs. Jules. I spoke to him over the vacation. He seems like a very nice man. A man? asked Damien. Cool. They all thought it was pretty neat to have a man teacher. Yes, said Mrs. Jules. His name is Mr. Gorf.